Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com and the Big Four Accounting Firms YouTube channel. Before we get started, just wanted to remind everybody to support us if you have a chance or if you can. Even a dollar helps. And we have a link in the description to a website called Buy Me a Coffee. It's just a way to donate to us and support us. Again, any amount is helpful so that we can keep putting out content. And there's also other ways for you to support us in the show notes to this podcast or on YouTube in the description. In today's podcast, we're going to be talking a lot about KPMG. There's a lot there's a lot of news about KPMG. Should we discuss the good news or the bad news first? I'm going to go with the bad news. News just came out that uh, KPMG has agreed to a settlement to end a 10-year gender discrimination suit. And I guess it took 10 years to get to this, the end of this lawsuit. And KPMG has agreed to pay over $10 million to settle a long-running lawsuit filed by Leif Cabracer. And it's with regards to hundreds of female advisory and tax professionals at KPMG accusing the company of pay and gender discrimination. And then the plaintiffs claim that they were underpaid and underpromoted to statistically to a statistically significant degree. They also described the culture at KPMG as rife with gender discrimination, sexual harassment, and then retaliation. And it doesn't appear that each plaintiff will be getting that much money, but what it shows is a culture at KPMG is just not that good. And I'm speaking from my own experience as well that I don't think the culture at KPMG is that good. Uh, only work there if you really, really need a big four job. Otherwise, you can probably find a better job somewhere else. And I apologize to everybody that works at KPMG right now, but that's just my personal opinion and just the news items that we see come out about KPMG. Because there's no way that you get 400 plus people to do this and to be really specific about what happened. We're now going to talk about the new CEO for KPMG. Well, not the complete new CEO. This is a KPMG UK CEO. And the person that's going to be taking over is John Holt. And he's currently the head of the UK audit practice. And he's going to be taking over for Bill Michael. Because as you might remember Bill Michael said some not so good things in an online meeting. He told people to basically toughen up and he's taking over for a woman who was leading the firm over the interim period. So not sure how that meets KPMG's diversity standards, but, but they finally found their new UK CEO. So for everybody that's interviewing in the UK, you need to know that that's the CEO. As far from a diversity standpoint, he is a white guy. It appears to be based on the photos. So they are going to need to help people understand that based on their diversity initiatives everywhere. But that's just another piece of news. And I, I think it's important to follow the CEOs of the regions. It's obviously important if you work for KPMG to know who their CEOs are who the CEO is. If you're recruiting with KPMG UK, you need to know that. So you need to look into this guy. He's coming from the audit perspective. So that's something to know, but also it's important to know why the old CEO resigned. (laughs) He resigned because he was fed up with COVID stuff. And we spoke about that. So you can check that podcast out about how you probably should not speak out against COVID or it's strain on your mental health, unless you have a lot of other employees around you because Bill Michael got upset at people, but also it's, you can't get upset at people during this time of the pandemic, uh, no matter how long it's going to last because we saw what happened to a CEO. He was forced to step down. Okay. The last piece of news that we're going to cover is out of Australia. And I think this might just relate to Australia because it's pretty big news. Partners at KPMG in Australia have voted to abolish the firm's expected retirement age of 58. And they said they did this uh, in response to changing community and client ideas. And I think this is against age discrimination. 
but that's not really why that's there. It's to give young people an opportunity to be partners. And they say it was it, the age discrimination was outlawed in the legal field in the Age Discrimination Act in 2004. And so th what they're saying is they view it as archaic. Which I, I agree with on its face that it looks archaic that they're forcing people to retire. But it's also... It's also hard enough already to make partner at the big four county firms because there's so many partners that stick around because it's such a good job once you make partner. Uh, you really just have to stick around, stay buddies with your friends that are at the clients, uh, wait for RFPs to come in, and you make hundreds of thousands of, of dollars or pounds or whatever currency the country you're in, and you just don't leave. And now that they could stay into their retirement or in the years they would be in their retirement, why would you leave the, these people? You, you get so used to working the same job 20, 30, 40 years. So what, what's the incentive for you to leave now? And, and these people are set for retirement by and by large. They're set for retirement, these partners, because they've made hundreds of thousands of dollars for years. So now they're going to be there even longer. It's going to be harder to make partner now. Uh, it was already pretty difficult, but now it's just going to make it harder. To stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Support us financially through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the show notes to this podcast if you can. And if you can't, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video on the YouTube channel.